Hey guys, my name is Brian so from Top 10 Angel vs. Player. In this video, we're going to be talking about something that affects pretty much all game modes, other than shootout and practice, if you consider those game modes. And that's going to be how to fight the dreaded Ice Tilt. And on top of Ice Tilt, we're going to talk about energy and fatigue, because I feel like those are somewhat connected to Ice Tilt as well. So first of all, what is Ice Tilt? In the real NHL, imagine the ice like a seesaw. I had to I had to look up like to remember what it was called in the playground. But the idea is that it's kind of like an uphill battle for one team and on the other team like everything like everything's on one side of the ice where you're just able to pretty much dominate your opponent. So the announcers, the commentators, they'll they'll sometimes say the ice is tilted when like one team's being another team six to nothing and it's pretty much a bloodbath because they're they're just doing everything out there, everything correctly out there, and playing the perfect game and whatnot. But in EA NHL Ice Tilt has a completely different meaning because if you pl you were to play a game, I guess a versus or hut, and you were to win by, you know, six to nothing, I guess let's go with that again. And your opponent sends you a message saying ice was tilted or something like that, they're not saying that you just dominated them because you're better than them. That's no, a completely different meaning and that's the f they're saying that you got really lucky because all your goals were I wouldn't say they were garbage or trash well, I mean yeah sometimes they are but pretty much all everything that was happening was going your way and so that's what your opponent's pretty much trying to say and I personally don't believe it exists but I do think that sometimes there is an absurd amount of luck involved that might be going one way or the other. So I'm going to mention a few things that I think could help with that, could fix that. And then again, we'll talk about energy and how that plays a role. So I'm going to take a real example that just happened to me of Ice Tilt in a way. So if you notice here, I'm going to press right bumper, I'm going to go to game stats. This is the second intermission. It says I'm down 5 nothing against Tampa. I have 21 shots on net, not a single goal. On the opposite end, he has 4 shots and 5 goals. How do you get 5 goals on 4 shots? That's a 125% shooting percentage. That's, <laughs> that's a crazy amount of shooting percentage. Thankfully, this actually didn't happen to me in a versus game or just any kind of competitive game. I just did this offline and I just pulled my goalie and just, you know, let him shoot at the empty net while I just took a bunch of terrible shots. So, so it just made it look like it's ice tilted. And that's not the point. But this is just like an example of something that, like, people complain to EA about with regards to ice tilt. They, they show them, like, a little screenshot of this. I. I I sometimes go through the, the EA NHL Twitter and I, I just see people posting stuff like this. Not like, t this is probably extreme just because it's five goals on four shots, but it's probably like, you know, three goals on like five shots. And the other person has like, I guess they could have like 15 or 20 shots. And unfortunately, you know, sometimes it is the case where there's just, uh, you're extremely unfortunate, and the puck goes in the net. There's nothing you could have done about it, like do about it. If you guys watched uh, Bacon Country's video on uh, how he's mad at NHL 17, like there were two goals there that there was nothing he could have done about it. Like it just went right by all his players and his goalie, and you're just left wondering WTF. Though so, some of the other goals in that video, I thought weren't really ice tilt related or he could have done something about that but that's okay we're not here to talk about it 
Uh, but here are some things that you can do to fight something like this so that it doesn't happen. The first thing is to swap goalies. And to swap goalies, you do that in the intermission between periods. You used to be able to uh, swap them mid-period. If you saw uh, the video that I uploaded with like the hilarious moments, I think it's Clips of the Week 2, Community Clips of the Week 2, the last clip, I swapped my goalie uh, in the middle of a period, and he ends up running out while the opponent has the puck to Swip, swatch, yeah, swatch, <laughs> switch places with uh, Howard or Mazik or whoever it was, and funny enough, he he doesn't capitalize on that chance. But I'm guessing they couldn't quite figure out how to how to make it so that they would swap goalies like between plays when the play is stopped. So they got rid of it. Now you can only do it uh, in the intermission, and so you got to to do it. You got to manage teams in an offline. I guess online too, you'd go to lines and strategies. Then offline, you'd have to go to edit lines and then press left trigger, go to goalies. Goalies, that's not goalies. And you just press X to swap out Mrazic for Howard, or I guess square for PlayStation. And so another thing that you can do that might somewhat be related to, to, to Ice Tilt, but I think it, this is more if you're playing against someone who keeps shooting the same way, who keeps shooting blocker side on your goalie, what you can do is you can switch your goalies who have similar overall ratings, but their glove sides are different. In this case, Howard and Mrazic are both uh, lefties, but if one of them was a righty, all of a sudden that blocker side's on the opposite side and will completely mess up your opponent because your goalie's likely not to make, or he's gonna make those saves now. And it's going to be opposite side. That's going to be his weak spot. This blocker side is pretty deadly in most NHL games. Another thing that I do want to caution you guys about is uh, switching a very high overall goalie with a low overall goalie. That that will kind of change the dynamics of the game quite a bit. So all of a sudden you have a pretty weak goalie in net, and any shot on them can go in. So in Hockey Ultimate Team, I recommend you have two similar overall goalies. In versus, I recommend you have a team that has two solid goalies. Or, I guess, a backup goalie that is okay. You don't want some AHLer as a backup goalie. Another thing when it comes to swapping goalies that you can do is if your opponent's shooting, uh, keep shooting low on you and you have a butterfly goalie, or sorry, if you have a stand up goalie, stand up goalies are meant to just save all the high shots. Your opponent's shooting low, you can swap your goalie so you can have a butterfly goalie and he'll stop most of the the low shots, but he'll be susceptible to the high shots. Hybrid goalies can be kind of tricky because they're supposed to get both, but I feel like they might not have a specialty, so I don't know if that's the way that you'd want to go. Anyway, in online, other than EASHL, EASHL you cannot swap your goalies no matter how much you want to. You can't swap out your terrible, uh, uh, I forgot their names. <laughs> terrible ger gener bleh, generic names with another generic name. Because they're probably the same, it's just, it sucks. But, in other game modes, you get to this screen, where it says it aligns out of strategies. You either press Y or triangle, depending on your con console, of course. And it would say on the bottom, goalie quick swap. You, you also need to back out when you do this, because sometimes the uh, that doesn't save. Same with editing your lines in the middle of the game. That may not save if you don't back out. Another thing I want to mention to you guys, based on this whole high percentage shooting thing, is that some players that you'll play against might just have high percentage shots, or just the same shot that they'll always take. And this may not work well against them. If you notice on the versus leaderboards, if you guys go there, go to the top 100, sort it by the top 100, and then sort it again by their shooting percentage, they all have absurdly high shooting percentages. Which means they they can score and make it kind of look like these stats. 
I tend to take a lot more shots than most players because I feel like I have more opportunities than they do. And while I'll sco score a lot of goals, I don't think my shooting percentage is all that high just because anywhere that I think I'll score, I'll shoot from. So it may not be the best opportunity at the time, but I see an opportunity, I take it. But still, I, I think my shooting percentage is still pretty good. So, now if we were go to go to the game, I'm going to start it up here in a, in a moment. The other thing I want to talk about with regards to Ice Tilt is energy and fatigue. I think it's kind of like a little bit of a... I want to say it's a hidden component, but a lot of people just don't know that energy and fatigue exist in this game. It's pretty much the reason why you have to make line changes. you got to put fresh legs out on the ice every so often. You'll notice your players are a lot slower over time. And sometimes you may not even be able to win face-offs when you know you should. This can happen if your center is tired, if he takes a lot of hits, or if uh, he's even injured. And that's, I think, an important aspect of ESHL, ESHL, Esports Hockey League, where uh, you don't want to play as a small center. Because once you get injured, you'll never be able to win a face-off again, almost. This happened to me a lot in the earlier NHLs, where I played as a sniper, I think it was. I don't know. I played as a really small center. I'd win a lot of face-offs early, but as soon as I got hit, I lost every face-off until the end of the game. So I want to let you guys know fatigue exists in this game. And you have to, I won't say you have to worry about it, but just, just know it exists. So some things that you can do to help out with fatigue. I'm going to start the game. Is you can do manual line changes. Of course in ESHL you can't do this. Which you would do with uh, B or circle button for forwards. Or X slash square button for defensemen. Right now I have it set to to manual line changes so that you can see just how much my players will slow down over time. You see the bar is, is getting lower every time. I'm just going to skate around here, kind of in a circle, really big circle, kind of like a cylinder. So some players, what they like to do, I mentioned this in an earlier video. Oh, I mentioned this in an earlier video, is they'll sit behind their net and then do a line change, so that all of their players will go out, and then you can just pass it up for for a breakaway. I can be pretty effective against uh, a very aggressive forecheck with mine, but my defensemen usually take care of that. Or I notice it and I and I sit back with one of my defensemen and wait. So I think this is Larkin here. He's kind of he's kind of starting to get a lot slower than normal. Like 21 is kind of going faster than him right here. And so now the line change. The line is is yellow. And he's not as effective anymore. His shooting goes pretty much everything goes down. Shooting, skating, his uh, his defensive and offensive awareness. So he'll he'll give up the puck a lot easier, like that. Uh, he won't be able to poke check as much, and everything of that of that nature. And so something that you can do that could be effective is you could you could start a fight. Which I don't, I don't tend to do too much. Plus, I'm not that great at fighting. You just spam up on the right stick multiple times until until you win. Or you can uh, you can learn and you can learn to fight and win every fight. It doesn't matter. But to start a fight, I mentioned this in the in a past video. Off the face off, what you can do is you can spam the Y button, and that's most mostly effective so that you don't get a penalty. You can face wash someone by not having the puck by neither of you having the puck, you and the person, the opponent that you're next to, neither of you having the puck and pressing the Y button. 
Might even have to press it twice. I don't remember how how it works. Still has possession out of his own end. In 17. Uh, back a little further. Another way you can start a fight is going offside and taking a shot at the goalie when the play is stopped. So that'll like that'll kind of initiate it, but the the person on the other team also has to accept it. Finally, if actually uh, if the other person were to do something like that as well, if they were to go offside and take a shot, you can you can start the fight there as well. Then the last thing is after a big hit, you can you can choose to start a fight there as well. If it's big, if it's a big hit that causes an injury or a dirty hit, you can start a fight. And so when you win the fight, you'd get all your energy back and your guys feel fully rested. Of course, the guy who gets injured probably won't have his like legs unbroken or arms unbroken. I don't know, hand unbroken. But I think the rest of your guys will be energized. So now I'm going to show you that my, all my lines here, or I guess my forward line two, my defensive line two, are are out of it. No energy. They're pretty slow. So something that you can do for this is uh, you can take a time out and. Of of course, you can't just pause it when you have the puck or when the opponent has the puck. You need to wait until the play is stopped, because this is offline. You need to wait until the play is stopped, and then when you go to manage teams, and of course I don't have a timeout because I accidentally used it earlier. <gasps> ah! That's, that's frustrating. <clears throat> oh, but you would uh, you'd hit this timeout button right here. And when you'd go back, your players would have all of their energy back to start the play. So how is that useful? If if you get an icing or if you get a penalty, you your players are forced to stay out on the ice and the puck, the faceoff is in your zone. That means your center is I guess doesn't doesn't have as much energy and will will have trouble taking the face off. On the flip side, on the power play for the opponent, because you just got a penalty, or I guess the puck's in in your zone because of the icing, the opponent will have fresh legs on the ice, so he'll be most likely to win uh, a face off because of that. So you can call a timeout. When, when things, when all your all your lines are tired, you just got a penalty, or whatever it is, you can call a timeout, and it could, or I guess it could, uh, you know, change the complexion of the game, because all your players will get all their energy back. You could potentially win the win the face off from there. A little bit of a warning, though, is when you when you take a face off, it technically counts as the opponent, or sorry, taking a timeout. It technically counts as the opponent taking a timeout as well. So they'll get fresh legs as well. That's why you do not want to take a timeout on a power play because the opponent's penalty killers will get all their energy back as well. So hopefully all of these different things that I've just told you about with regards to energy, fatigue, ice tilt, it's informative and educational because these are kind of some hidden aspects of the game that not a lot of people know about. I've played a lot of games where I was down by, by a few goals. I ended up switching my goalie and all of a sudden my players, like they play a lot better. And so from there, I was able to come back and win. Other times that I've swapped a goalie was when I was up by five goals. And the opponent buries three goals in in a row. And all of a sudden, I'm not feeling confident about my goalie. So I switch him out, and all of a sudden, well, I guess all of a sudden twice. <laughs> I go back to dominating again and end up winning the game.